Now we're going to get a little bit more sophisticated in our, certainly in our Excel and by extension in our mathematics. We have worked with presumed weights. We have worked with uh, an assumed alpha. Now we're going to move a little bit forward and go, okay, well, what if we were to use solver? Right? We, we're, you know, use that wonderful little mathematical optimization engine called solver in order to calculate some of these uh, optimal values. Okay, well, first step is I don't want to mess around with what I've already done. So I'm going to make a copy of this spreadsheet. So I just go down to data here and I'm going to move our copy, right click, move our copy, create a copy. I'm just going to move that to the end and I'm going to click OK. Let me give these some names here just so I can distinguish between the two. Okay. So the first one I'm just going to call forecasting models. Forecasting models. The second one I'm going to call uh, solver. for the exponential smoothing model. Okay. Oops. So on the solver for exponential smoothing model, this is now what I'm going to work with. I am going to try to minimize the mean squared error. I have everything all done up. So this is, should, should be pretty quick and easy. Just have to incorporate the basics of solver. Okay, so let's roll, roll on through with that. Okay, so we're going to go to data. We're going to pick solver. Data and then solver. Objective cell must be an active sheet on the worksheet. Yes, absolutely. Good stuff. It must be. Uh, set objective is we're going to set that objective to be mean squared error. We could have picked MAD, and, and we'll do MAD when we get a weighted moving average just to show that there's nothing magical about mean squared errors. Uh, we want to minimize, so make sure that min button is clicked. We do not want to maximize error. Easy to forget the min button, so minimize that error. What are we changing? All we have to choose, change out alpha, right? It's the only thing that is in that formula to, that's changeable. You know, demands are demands. Forecast is dependent on alpha and the demand, so the thing that we can change and optimize is the alpha. Subject to what constraints? Well, the first biggest constraint is that that alpha, I select that cell, must be less than or equal to 1. And I'm going to click OK. Now, I know it has to be greater than or equal to 0. However, there is this little box at the, at the bottom, make unconstrained variables non-negative. As long as I leave that checked, I have essentially made it greater than or equal to zero. If you're working with an older version of Excel where that box doesn't exist, then you'd come up with it, you'd do another constraint uh, and just add constraint and then make that greater than or equal to zero. And we're gonna keep this as GRG non-linear. You, you may have remembered when you were doing Linear programming in Finance 113, we use the simplex method, which we will revisit again when we get to constraint management. Here, exponential smoothing models are not a linear model. So if you were to try to use the simplex linear method, an error message would come spitting out at you. Okay, so we can keep with GRG nonlinear. And then I click solve. And good, no errors. This is awesome. We'll keep the solution. And we see that our optimal value, 0 0.573814. Right? Mean squared error is 15,470. How did we do previously? Just went to the other spreadsheet. Uh, 15,710. So errors went down. This is great. Uh, MAPE went down. It was 1.64 before. It's 1.61 now. Even MAD went down. So uh, everything suggests that this is a, a better model than what we had before. Okay. So next step is let's do this for the weighted moving average as well. Right. So let's make another spreadsheet. So I'm going to go back to the original forecasting models one. I don't want to mess around with, I, I, I like it, I've got all my solver stuff 
all the entries in for the exponential smoothing model. I don't really want to mess around with them just in case I want to go back and, and adjust something. Who knows, maybe add data to the, this data set, then rerun it. It's all set up. Notice how easy it was for us to just go through and, and just boom. You know, use Solver. It was, it was so quick and, and straightforward. We did it in a couple of minutes because we had everything all set up again. So back to the original forecasting model. We'll make another copy. Uh, move a copy. I'll move this to the uh, end. Uh, create a copy. Click OK. I'm going to put it in front of sheet two. That was a boo-boo anyway. Going to give it a new name. Let's call this one solver for the weighted moving average. Okay, so now I'm working on the solver for the weighted moving average formula. Okay, so now let's, uh, we'll, we'll do this weights and we'll optimize it for MAD. Okay, now we have to, do have to introduce a constraint in this regard, right? These weights have to sum up to one. Now, it was kind of easy to work with when we were given weights, right? We just could just do it by inspection. But now we need to actually program that in there. So we're going to go equal to sum bracket, highlight all those weights, close the bracket, and then push enter. Right? So we have a restriction. The weights are summed up to one. Everything's cool. It's cool when we ran it. Now, because we're going to be changing these weights, so let's maybe give it a little different color here. Because we're changing it. And take the color off of the exponential smoothing model because we are less concerned about it. And uh, we're going to optimize uh, MAD in this regard. So let's give that one a little bit of uh, special to us color. And I'll just take the color off of the MSC from before. Right. So now we're just focusing in on the weights, which we will determine, and we'll watch to see how that MAD changes. So after that, it's the uh, same process as we did before. We go from data to solver. Objective function, OK, gotcha. What's our objective function? OK, in this case, we're going to minimize the uh, mean absolute deviation. Objective set the min. This is great. The variables that we are going to change are the weights. Subject to the constraints, those weights have to add up to zero. So this value here must equal to one. Sorry, the weights add up to one. Okay, so that's very important. Each individual weight has to be greater than zero, but we, we, we tackle that with the make non-constrained, unconstrained variables non-negative. Okay, so each no weight can be negative. As long as this box is checked, that won't happen. If for whatever reason you're working with a version of Excel that doesn't have all that on there, then you would add a constraint where you'd highlight all those cells and you would just set them to be greater than or equal to the constraint of zero. Okay. And then we click solve and we wait. Ooh, we get some answers. So cool. All right, we get mean absolute deviation in 98.87. Couple of measures here for weights. This weight is so small with that e to the minus 15 that we could almost consider this to be zero. In fact, let's just, uh, it would be kind of, we'd consider it kind of, let's see how it messes up our damn numbers. Yikes. Okay. We would functionally consider that to be a zero number. And then, so the weight would be about 0 0.14, 0 0.86. Uh, and, and so we see that the most two most recent periods are the ones with the heavier weights. Um, interestingly enough, uh, it seems to be a little bit of a lag there, right? The most immediate period doesn't have the biggest impact, but that period after, ooh, that's where we f see the see the impact. It's almost like something happens, and then it takes like a, an extra day for people to respond to whatever changes occurred. 
So that's kind of a pretty interesting little result uh, there. And see, there you go. There's there's essentially solver in uh, in only a few minutes for both of them. The setup was what took all of the effort. Okay, next segment: trend-adjusted smoothie models.